All right, guys. So, like I said, today we're going to be talking about consolidation, and then we're going to go into to the chart. We're going to get straight to the point. All right. So, like every other training or trades, you know, there is a disclaimer. You know, past results doesn't guarantee future results. So, so you want to make sure you use proper risk management, leverage your account right. All right. Same goes as uh, we use for scalping the impulse. We're going to use for scalping the consolidation. You know, five trades. You know, with a stop loss and profit of minimum of four pips, which is uh, my daily goal, which is a total of 20 pips uh, per day. Weekly is 25 trades, minimum stop loss and profit at four pips. That's a total of 100 pips. And monthly, the goal is 100 trades minimum with a stop loss in profit at four pips, which is 400 pips total. So like anything you do, you want to make sure you have a goal so you're not just trading uh, for no reason. You want to trade and have a goal so once you hit those goals, you can level up and get to the next goal that you're shooting for. So reason for scalping is basically you catch uh, pips pretty quick, uh, weekly withdrawals, fast movement in the market, uh, and then you trade any time of the day. And that's what this uh, consolidation is really going to show you how to trade any time of the day. All right. Uh, the broker, you want to find a broker with low spreads. The broker that I use have low spreads, low commission, and they reimburse you on your deposit. What I recommend you do is, you know, do research on the broker that best fits your trading style. Uh, if you want to basically get more information on which broker I use, you can go to mrgj.com and uh, go into the inquiry and send a message, we'll answer it. Or you can go into facts, and we have brokers that we recommend that I use, you know, on the website, all right? Uh, basically, same thing like the impulse. You scalp. You know, you find, find one pair, you marry it. You know, basically, you know the move that it makes. Uh, the reason I use GJ is because it averages between 100 and 200 pips daily. It can go in one direction or it can go up and correct itself or go down and correct itself. But it usually averages between 1 to 200 pips daily. So with that amount of pips and movements, I think this pair, is, you know, has one of the, the most movements, you know, uh, daily. You know, that's basically money that you can make in the market or catching pips uh, from the movements, all right? Uh, the more time you spend with one particular pair that you're trading, you know it's every move. You're familiar with everything that it's doing, so you can tell, you know, when it's, you know, basically going to go in a direction. And it helps you pretty, pretty good in, in making your decision in the trade you get in. All right, so now we're going to go more in depth other than this impulse. Impulse is, it was totally different, but we're going to go in depth on, you know, what we look for when we're scalping the consolidations. Uh, and this is where, you know, we use the indicators. The indicators we use is the Ikimoku Kinko Hayo, which is the cloud, uh, the RSI, which is the relative strength index, and also the bulletin bands is where we go off of. All right, so when we're talking about the cloud, basically the cloud is one glance equilibrium chart. All right, so there's a few things that we're looking for in the cloud. We're looking at the red line right here, which is the Tekinson. And that's all, uh, the signal line, also known as the money line. All right. Then you have the blue line, which is the Kijensen, Kijensen, which is the confirmation line. All right. And then the cloud here is identified. All right. So here's a few ways we look for different signals on buys or sell when we're looking at the cloud. So if you look to the left, the sell signal would be when the red line crosses below the blue line. <clears throat> That's the indicator that it's going to go into a cell. So it crossed here to the left, and as you can see, it actually dropped. All right. To the right is a buy signal. The red line crossed above the blue line, and if you notice, the candles went up. So basically, when we're looking at the cloud and those two lines, that's what we're looking for uh, on those two signals. All right. Also, if the two lines are moving horizontal, that's a form of consolidation, which is what we're going to talk about today that's going to help you out in making that decision on getting in and out on your highs and the lows. All right, another indicator we use is the RSI. And if the RSI is over 70, put this down here. If it's over 70, that means it's overbought. And if something is overbought, then what's going to happen is it's going to go into a cell. 
So when it's overbought, you will go into a cell and you will catch the pips as it go down. All right. Also, when the RSI is under 30, that means it's oversold. So if something is oversold, you're going to get into a buy, which is the opposite of what you're looking for. All right. Just remember, let me go back. When we're talking about, you know, the RSI and oversold and being bought, just think about it. You, uh, airplane starts off level at the ground. It takes off, goes up. It levels off when it reaches the altitude. And then when it's time to land, it goes back down and it levels off. So think of the market of that way. There's no way the market is just going to go straight up and never level out. There's no way it's going to go straight down and never level down. So, I mean, level off. So anything that goes up has to come down. Anything that goes down, it has to come up. You know, think of uh, Newton's law. Every action have a reaction, you know. So by something going up, the react, that's the action. The reaction is it has to correct itself and come down, all right? All right, Bullinger and Bands is another indicator that you can use. And basically what it's doing is it's leveling, the, uh, it's measuring the highs and the lows of the candles, okay? Could be consolidation or it could just be, you know, whatever the market's doing. But usually in, in consolidation is when I would plug in the Bollinger and Bands just to see my highs and lows. You know, over time, you'll be able to see from your naked eyes on uh, basically on, on, on the measuring the highs and the lows. All right. We talk about leverage, leverage, leverage. This is going to be key to your success in the market. If you leverage your account correct. If you leverage your account correct, trust me when I say this, that you will basically come out profitable in most of your trades that you get in when you leverage your account. So we talk about 200 to 400 pips, worst case scenario. There's very few times where it gets to that point. But if it does, you want to make sure that you're not sweating or panicking when it comes to you know a trade going the other way. Most of the time when you're trading, the consolidation, you know, and I'll just give you the hidden background on, on my trades. So in the last nine months, you know, with my record being 616 wins and seven losses, you know, seven of the losses came from consolidation. None of them came from the impulse because when, you, when you're trading the consolidation, the breakout, you know, of the consolidation can either make or break you. So, you know, if news comes out during the consolidation and it goes the opposite direction, that's what actually can get you. But the consolidation, you know, I call it scalper's paradise because once you identify where it's consolidating, you can eat all day long on catching pips, all right? But you have to leverage your account right so you're not basically blowing an account and you're okay. All right, so how do we find the highs and the lows or what do we look for? So first off, when you scalp in the consolidation, you want to determine the overall trend. Now, this can be, you know, from the cloud. This can be from market structure. You know, if you learn that in the academy, you know, this can be from whatever, you know, you, you was able to identify, you know, because everybody has their own journey in trade in trading. So if you were able to identify, you know, faster with the cloud, the trend of where the trade is going, if it's bullish or bearish, then you use that. You know, if it's market structure, if it's zone to zone, whatever you, you, you name, you know, you use that. You determine the overall trend of that particular trade, of that pair. And then what you do is you find the highs and the lows of majority of the candles. Now, <clears throat> when I'm looking at highs and lows for the candles, I'm looking for the body, where majority of the body hit, not the wicks. Trading the impulse, Trading the impulse is basically, you know, wick to wick when you're calculating, you know, your pip count. The consolidation is where most of the body of the candles are going to meet. So you find the highs and the lows. And the way you identify consolidation is two ways. <clears throat> One, <clears throat> the market moves three ways. It moves up, it moves down, and it moves sideways. So if you identify the market moving sideways, which I'll show you in a few, that's basically the form of consolidation, okay? Also, the other way you can identify is when you have the red line and the blue line, basically it's horizontal, and that's, that shows consolidation also. So once you identify the high and the low, you want to make sure these candles in between the highs and the lows are basically moving at least 10 to 15 pips. 
you want to have, you know, be able to make, you know, at least four or five pips on the trace that you getting into. All right. And then, like I said, you enter in the direction of the trend. All right. Most of the time it's 10 pips for your take profit. Basically, you enter here, you know, uh, you hit 10 pips for your take profit because it's still scalping. It's in and out of the market. But the name of the game is getting your stop loss in profit. All right. So at, once the trade gets five, five to four, four to five pips in profit, you're going to put stop loss in profit. So, for example, if this is where you enter, your take profit is going to be 10 pips if this was a buy. And once you got five or four or five pips, you would throw your stop loss in profit. Okay? And then you would ride it up to 10 pips. So the reason, you know, this is so valuable is because sometimes, you know, on a 10 pip call, this same stop loss and profit, you can get about 30, 40 pips sometimes off of that one call. Because let's say you went into a buy, this is your 10 pip margin, and it comes up, you put your stop loss and profit, the candles come back and knock you out, goes back to entry. You can enter it again. And you can do that multiple times until you take profit hits. So you can get so many pips from this one trade call, whereas somebody would just be sitting and waiting on 10 pips to hit. Off of this stop loss and profit, you could ride this up and down until it hits your take profit. All right. So summary is basically set your goals, you know, with the scalping method, make regular withdrawals, use a broker with low spreads, uh, use uh, one or more indicators, I mean two or more indicators for your confirmation. You know, remember any profit is big profit, guys. So if you if you jump in the trade and you caught four pips, that's still cool. Be happy with that. All right, don't be upset that you didn't catch 10 pips. All right, and remember, if you can't put your stop loss in profit fast because the market is moving pretty fast, just go ahead and close the trade out. All right, this is going to be key for you guys. Don't over leverage. Make sure you do not over leverage. If you don't over leverage, you'll understand and you'll see more success, you know, in your trading profits. All right, and you know, this is it happens to the best of us. You know, you know, if I catch myself over leveraging, it's mainly in market money. That means there's money that I made in the market and I'm good to go. So if I do get, and it happens to the best of us, I promise you, but you have to stay the course. And, and if you don't over leverage, you'll be good to go. All right. And until you master strategy or you're comfortable with it, make sure you trade your demo accounts before you go live. You want to make sure you back test, back test, and you understand what you're looking for. Right. All right. So consolidation, let's go back. Consolidation, we said we're going to find highs and lows. We said the market is going to move left, for, I mean, up, down, sideways. So, for example, right here, market is moving sideways. Right here, the market is moving up. Right here, the market is kind of sideways here. Right here, the market is moving down. This here, you can see a little up, up movement. Moving down, moving sideways, moving down, moving sideways. Perfect consolidation for Scalpers Paradise. Right here, perfect for a long time, right? So market move up, market move down, moving sideways, right? Move down, move up, move down, sideways. So we look for consolidation is sideways, the sideway movement. So what we do is we want to find the highs and the lows of the consolidation, right? So what I would do, I find where majority of the candles hit. Okay. Just the majority, right? So this whole movement here is consolidation. So started off at 142.537 and 142.678. So that's about 63, that's about 14 pips, right? So right here, this is the high, this is the low, okay? So if we determine that the trend was an uptrend at that time or a downtrend, Let's say it was an uptrend. The reason why you would want to go with the uptrend is when it breaks out, <clears throat> you want to catch it on the breakout. 
<clears throat> so what you would do if it was a, if you determined that it was an uptrend, <clears throat> you would wait till it get in the vicinity of the low. So this is your low. And then you would go into a buy <clears throat> and you would catch it on its way up, right? You take profit with hit or your stop loss would hit in profit. And then you wait till it come back down in the vicinity of the low. And then you catch it and ride it back up. <clears throat> ride it back up or you stop loss and profit. So even though this candle finished down, it might came up, stop loss may hit in profit, come back down to your entry <clears throat> and you ride it back up. Same thing, come back down in the vicinity. You may not have entered, but I probably will, depending on how much pips this would have been. And then you could ride it back up or you would have just waited till it came back down to your low over here. And then you just ride it back up. And you, I mean, this here probably was for a couple of days, if I'm not mistaken, not a couple of days, probably a full day. But you could have basically eat all kind of pips on this consolidation here. And then if you was in a buy, when it break out, you would have been in the safe zone because you would have got in probably here. And then you would have, your TP would have hit a pair or a stop loss with hidden profit and it would have broke out. Does everybody see that? Yes, no, maybe so. Yes, sir. Yes. Yep, yes, sir. Do. Look for another one. Yes. So he said market moves three ways, up, down, sideways, right? So this is a down movement. This is a sideways movement, right? Let's see if we have how much pips left here. 92. That ain't, that's not about 10 to 15 pips, so we won't even look at that consolidation. You would have got a headache trying to scalp the consolidation there. Let's see, this may be one. Mm. Like I said, if I throw the Bollinger Bands on here, you would see it measure it. I just... Before, that's what I used to do when I couldn't know, identify with my naked eye, but I just looked for a majority of the way. Right here would have been, you know, pretty good consolidation. Let's see. So we're looking at the majority of it. It looked like it consolidated here for a few candles, then it went up a little bit, and then it consolidated over here. So that would, that, that would have got you. That's why, you know, you say you want to wait a few candles before you can identify it. <clears throat> So let's just not, let's not look at that one. Right here in the cloud is, is nice consolidation. Let's see, market move up and then it started to move sideways, but it moved on a slant, but let's go. <clears throat> we was right here, let's see. Majority of them. So from here to probably here would have been a nice consolidation, right? Let's see, we had one, four, two, three, one, and one, four, two, four, three. So that's about 12 pips. So that's, let's say you are, you would have find determined, you know, so this one might have been easy because this looked like this was an impulse. So the correction, you know, could have been here. Let's see, on here, 48. 142, so that's about 120 something pips. So this was the correction on that impulse and then it consolidated. <clears throat> so basically, you know, and this is where all the uh, indicators play a part too. You wanna look at the RSI, you wanna look at your red line, your blue line, you wanna look at the dips, all this to determine the trend of the cloud or the trend of the trade. So right here, we determined that it was going into a cell, <clears throat> you would wait till it get in the vicinity of the high, catch it coming back down. Then you would wait till it got in the vicinity of the high again, catch it come back down, wait till it get to the vicinity of the high, come back down, same thing. You just ride that thing all day, right? Then it took a little drop here and then it started to consolidate. I wouldn't <clears throat> recommend you trade consolidation in the cloud because the cloud have a lot of movement. Uh, I would say back test with the cloud before you actually you know, start to trade in the cloud. 
Let's see if we can find another good one here. This here looks like one. So right here, I think this is where we was back bouncing off of uh, that support level last week. I think it was last week, the beginning part of last week. All right. So same thing, you know, determine the trend. If you had it as a sell, you catch it on its way up. Yeah, it broke it here. Don't panic. Your leverage good. Bam, came back down. Same thing. Got in at the high, in the vicinity. Bam, caught it again. Did a little small consolidation, got in when it came to the top, we caught it back down. So here's the thing. This is what people, the, 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 the biggest question, the most questions you have. How do I know my, my, entry, my entry point? When do I enter? Should I wait till I get to the bottom of my uh, low or the high of my high? Here's the answer. You just wait for it to get in the vicinity because Two, two to five pips is not going to make or break you if you miss out and you jump in and then you wait for it to catch the next, either the high or the low. So, you know, I wouldn't always wait. If it goes to where, you know, <clears throat> your high or low is, that's more, more merry to you. I mean, you should be good. But then you could miss out on a few pips, you know. So I would just tell you wait until it gets in the vicinity between one to four pips, one to five pips. And then you just go from there, because remember, we're looking at, we're looking at, you know, 10 to 15 pips when, when we're looking at uh, the consolidation, all right? So you want to make sure you're in the vicinity. So there's never, no such thing as a perfect entry. You know, no, if somebody tells you that, I don't know what to say, but there's no such thing as a perfect entry, guys. You know, you can try to get the best entry as possible, you know, but if you leverage right, then you should be good to go. All right, so what I see coming, guys, like I see we had an impulse here on Friday, uh, and then it consolidated. The RSI is pretty high. I have this thing about to pop, and then it pops, and it's going to pop. All right, now it, I do have it, you know, going back up some, but it can go uh, very well go back and test the support that it came from down here. I mean, this has been, GJ been playing around <clears throat> the last two weeks. That's why you just follow the strategy, follow your system, and don't over leverage. All right? Do we have any questions? But, you know, we have some dips coming right here. Remember the dips are either two before, you know, or the, the, the uh, two candles before, or the candle of the dip, or two candles after. So what I'm looking at here, man, I'm re right here. You know, we have a dip here. That could have been this, this, this cell candle that came down. But we have a dip here. You know, we have a small dip here. We have a nice little dip here. We have a huge dip here. And we have a fat cloud that's coming. So if you want to put in a small, you know, or you in there, you can actually put in a trail and stop loss, you know, or just, you know, your trail will hit overnight, you know. But uh, once you leverage, you should be good to go, all right? Somebody say, isn't it a buy, can a buy cloud? Yes, it is a buy cloud. <clears throat> but the cloud is getting fat, so it could, you know, once it gets through that cloud, which is probably going to consolidate throughout the rest of the night. I mean, you should have some movement on Tokyo, uh, and then after Tokyo, it's going to probably consolidate into our LBO, London Breakout Session. I told you guys I was going to pick five names, but I, I went through, we had some activity, and I was looking through, so I, I wanted to just announce the, I think I went to seven names. And what you'll have access to in the seven names is we'll do a Wednesday training where we'll probably catch some pips and you guys can pick my brain because what I tend to realize is when it's one-on-ones or, you know, small group sessions, that's where all the questions come out. When we do live, you know, big trainings like this, you know, it's more or less people are, they're afraid to say the wrong or ask the wrong question or they feel like they don't know much about trading, so they don't want to ask questions. So I say, well, we want to try, I'll try to do this every now and then where I just grab a few people that's been, you know, giving back to Mr. GJ, pipwalking.com or, you know, that's subscribed. So this week, I think we said anybody that was subscribed, 
to my YouTube channel. Uh, you go to Mr. GJ, you subscribe there, or if you had made a donation of a dollar or more, you know, I, was, I just picked random names, you know, that I, I noticed, I identified, that I see that's been following for a long time, or that's been, you know, recently doing, you know, a lot, you know, uh, because at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, giving back, you know, so I know the information and the training is valuable, and there's also a lot of time coming from me, so what I make sure I do is my time is going back into the community on different charities, organizations. So, you know, we said if you did a donation of a dollar or more, you would have, you know, I would randomly pick you. So the seven names I get, and if they're not on this call, then you give them a high five or send them a message, tell them they missed out. Um, but if they're on the call, just shoot me a message on Telegram. And uh, we'll make sure we uh, give you access. But what, what you have access to is a, a training with me on Wednesday. Uh, and then also, if you want to be a part of the money team, we were doing a 90 day training where we're going to basically give 10, you know, drop 10 pips every single day, starting today at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. You know, it's myself, Jamal Green and Lyndon, uh, all successful traders in the market. And our job is to give you one trade per day, 10 pips a day, separate account, 10 pips a day between me. Uh, Jamal Green and Lyndon, I mean, we, 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 when we trade by ourselves, we're basically calling 60 to 100 pips trade, you know, in, in a day, especially, you know, when it's consolidation or impulse. So we know for a fact that between us three, we'll be able to give you at least 10 pips. This is going to be separate from Mr. GJ Pip walking. I'm still going to call trade. You still use the same thing you're using. So if your name was called, you send me a message. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and... Uh, We'll add you to, uh, to our WhatsApp group, which is the Money Team WhatsApp group, and you'll have access to our daily, uh, and, and the train, the training is not even a train, the training is Wednesday, that's my training, but you have access to basically, you know, this trade run, we call it, a, a thing we call it a six by six, by six. you know, six figures by, you know, the sixth month, which is June, and it's just 10 pips per day. That's all we focus on. We're going to let that trade, you know, run. Maybe next week we may kind of add to it. But just message me. Make sure you have WhatsApp so we can add you to it. We want to just make sure, you know, folks that's, you know, giving back and doing more. I, I just vision this to be, you know, impacting the world. That's, that's, that's my vision. And if you can see my vision with me, and you should see this trade in blue right now, y'all be a little smiling. But we have a lot more to come. Uh, me and Paul, we meet every single week, you know, just talking about Mr. G.J. Pip walking in this community. Uh, we talk every day, you know, on different ideas on what we can do to give back, you know, to you guys. I mean, what we're doing is nothing compared to what's about to come. You're talking about we're going to be dropping thousands of dollars, you know, computers, TV. I mean, it's, we got so much stuff planned. Other than that, you guys have a great week. Uh, this training here will be posted to Mr. GJ TV, hopefully by tomorrow. And then the training from last week is going to be released to YouTube. Uh, so, and then that, we'll go from there. All right, you guys have a good night. Appreciate it, GJ. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Thank, Thank you, David. You. Have a good Thank night. You. Good night, team. Thank you very much. <laughs>